Billy's Paintings. Number three, Ancient Connections. The first video in this series about Billy's paintings featured a painting called The Hand, which was taken from the back of the memoirs of Billy Shears. That painting had some imagery that was also used in a set of artwork by Billy called The Celts. In this video, we are going to look at another painting from The Celts called Ancient Connections, which is printed on page 191 of Memoirs. The Celts series of paintings were based on photographs taken from the book The Celts, First Masters of Europe. One of these photographs is seen here on the right. If we compare this photograph to Billy's Ancient Connections painting, we can see their similarity. And so here we have the painting on the left, and this photograph on the right is used as the basis of the central face in Billy's painting. In Billy's book about his artwork, he claims that his family history is connected to the Celts. This is also true of the biological Paul, as between them they have Irish and Scottish ancestry. And here's an excerpt from the interview with Billy from page 48 to 49 of Paul McCartney paintings. And it says, To the left of the central face is another piece from the Celtic book, another face which reminded me of Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stones. He looked rather like that. It was something about the mouth and the nose that reminded me. The Celtic man, in the middle, was one tribe, and this face on the left was another tribe. These were the connections between all the ancient civilizations. But as the painting started to develop, the one on the right started to look more modern. So I think of him as a more modern face, with these ancient connections in the background there. The rod almost goes through his mouth like a cigar. It is really an idea of the tribes being connected by something the thread or rod that connects us all. This shape I painted as a symbol, like a joke. With all this talk about symbolism, finally I had to put a symbol in there for one of these ancients to play, with a couple of symbolic trees in the background. And so if we go back to the painting, this photograph here on the right, taken from that Celtic art book, is used as the basis of the face on the far left in Billy's painting, seen as the mask. This image on the right is part of a sculpture called the Two-Headed Hermes of Roque Patoos. If we look at pictures of Charlie Watts, especially as a young man, it's not hard to see why Billy thought the face of the Two-Headed Hermes looked a bit like Charlie and I can see that too. But more importantly, if we push past the comparison to Charlie Watts, I wondered why the two-headed Hermes sculpture was featured in a book about Celtic art. Hermes was a Greek god, equivalent to the Roman god Mercury. Julius Caesar compared Mercury to the Irish and Celtic god Lou. A triple aspect depiction of him can be seen here on the left. So maybe that's the connection. However, Hermes is also synonymous with the Egyptian gods of Toth and Anubis. The combined identities of Hermes and Toth form the character known as Hermes Trismegistus, or Hermes the Thrice Born. He is a central figure in alchemy and the reason why there is a Hermetic tradition. Hermes Trismegistus and an image of him is seen here on the left, and Toth can both be linked to the magician card in a tarot deck. This card is known as the Magus in Crowley's Toth deck, and we can see that here on the right. In fact, the body of the Magus is roughly in the shape of the alchemical glyph of the elemental Mercury on the Magus card. Mercury along with sulphur and salt being the Tria Prima in alchemy. It is also a reference to the planet Mercury, with its associations of communication 
wisdom, self-knowledge and learning. In the interview quoted earlier, Billy refers to the face on the right of his painting as being a more modern face. He also says that there is a rod behind the faces connecting them together, and the rod looks like a cigar as it passes through the modern face on the right. On first inspection of that modern face, I wondered whether or not it was meant to symbolise Alistair Crowley, and in fact I actually showed this painting to several other people to see if they would come to the same conclusion, and actually remarkably they did. In particular, this image from Billy's painting reminded me of photographs of Crowley when he was trying to imitate Churchill. And we can see here an image of Churchill on the left and a couple of images of Crowley with a cigar on the right. Allegedly, Crowley taught Churchill the V for victory as a magical protection sign to counteract the swastika. Billy even includes that story on page 43 of Memoirs. Certainly, Churchill and Crony seem to have known each other, and with good reason. Both of them were involved in Freemasonry. Both of them were involved in British intelligence work during World War II. Churchill was also a member of the British Ancient Order of Druids and had an interest in the occult. And obviously, so did Crowley. So if we go back to the interview from Paul McCartney Paintings and carry on, it says, You know, whereas there was always a mechanical universe, this is the random chaotic universe. That is definitely what they are thinking about now. He's talking about the faces in the painting. There is something that appeals to me about random things. I often use it in music too. Just throw some elements together and stand back and look at how they are joined to each other. Billy then goes on in the interview to describe the orchestral fill in the middle of A Day in the Life, and says that this is a musical example of the random principle, telling the musicians to start at the lowest note of their instrument and progress to the highest note on their instrument over 23 bars of music, but at their own speed. And I've often wondered as a musician, why the musical fill is 23 bars long. Most musical phrasing divides into regular two, three or four bar lengths, so the sum total of the bars in a section of music should not add up to 23, because 23 is not a multiple of two, three or four. Possibly it relates to the two Pauls and the three other Beatles, but maybe it has another meaning. According to Crowley in 777, 23 is associated with the glyph of life, with the element of water, and the sacrifice of Osiris. In Hebrew gematria, the phrase, a thread, also sums to 23. The orchestral fill being a musical thread in the song, A Day in the Life. Now let's look at this painting from one more perspective. In the footnote on page 191 of Memoirs, Billy tells us that his Ancient Connections painting relates back to the song Eleanor Rigby. It says, The false-faced woman wore a mask that she kept in the jar by the door, meaning that she took off the false identity only when at home. It poetically foretold William, always wearing Paul's image preserved for the public. William, however, painted a significantly different perspective. In his 1994 painting, Ancient Connections, the mask represents Paul McCartney as their combined identity. Behind that public mask, the ancient gods are the real ones running their avatar. Ancient gods play as the modern rock idol. The ancient gods mentioned here relate back to the notion that Paul and Billy are reliving the Osiris Horus myth. Billy believes that Paul predicted Billy wearing Paul's image and encoded that idea into the lyrics of Eleanor Rigby. Billy then actualised that prediction. The line about the ancient gods playing the modern rock idol could also tie into Billy's visual pun that he disclosed in his earlier interview a symbol painted at the bottom of the painting 
for the ancient ones to play. In summary, then, we have the ideas of a false identity, as expressed in Eleanor Rigby, of ancient gods reincarnating, as in the Osiris Horus myth, of threads running through people from different ages to weave a continuing story. We even have a visual pun. I haven't decided on what the trees symbolise, if anything, and whether or not there is a triangle or pyramid behind the faces, and I wonder if you can see that too. Let me know in the comments if you can see any more hidden connections in the painting. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.